All right, in this video, we're going to do uh, five steps to graph a quadratic equation in standard form. I generally do this with students mainly to teach them the vocab uh, and everything that goes with with it. And because uh, with technology, you can graph these pretty quickly, uh, but it still helps to know all the vocab and and all the concepts behind it. So the first step here is on the left. I have my notes. So this this reads f at x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, which is a quadratic in standard form. And the first thing I look at is the a value. So my first step is to pull this a. If it's positive, which a is greater than 0, we know the graph opens up. So it looks like this. Sometimes I'll say that graph is happy because a is positive. If a is less than 0, um, which means it's negative, the graph opens down, or I might say it's sad, just making a sad face. So in our case, we know that a is equal to negative one-half in this case, so it's this first term, and it's negative, it's less than zero, so we know this opens down, or it's a sad graph. Um, the other thing, you know, while we're doing this, I mean, we're not going to graph anything just yet. We also know b is negative 1 because that's the value in front of the x. And c is equal to 4. Now, if you don't know, one thing I should point out is if you don't know what this g at x means, uh, look up function notation and uh, watch a couple videos on function notation if you don't understand that. Okay, so the second thing we find, or step two, is the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry can be, find by, be found by just taking x and uh, setting it equal to b over 2 times a, negative b over 2a. So in our case, and I'll do it, uh, let's do it in blue over here. So in our case, um, x equals negative negative 1 over 2 times negative 1 half because that's our a. Well if you simplify all that negative negative is positive 1 you have basically 1 over negative 1 because 2 times negative a half is negative 1 so we're looking at negative 1 as my axis of symmetry so x equals negative 1. Now what that is is we'll go ahead and put that on the graph Oops, wrong button. And <clears throat> here is x equals negative 1. So that's the first thing I graph on a quadratic in standard form. And what that is, is you'll see in a second, anything on the left can be mirrored to the right on this. That's an axis of symmetry. Okay, so we're ready for the third, the third step, which is to find the vertex. And the vertex... I'm going to give you the notes, and they may look a little bit crazy, uh, but you basically take your axis of symmetry, which is negative b over 2a, and you plug that into your function. So generally, I define my function as f at, at x. Well, our x value is the axis of symmetry, negative b over 2a. So, so that's what I would do is plug that in. Um, to the to find your vertex so we'll do it in green so our vertex in this case is we know negative 1 is our x value because that's our axis of symmetry and we just plug negative 1 into the function so you'd have and I'll just do that work really quick so here I've plugged it into my function I've taken the negative 1 and I'll go up here to the top and I've plugged it in to each of the x values. So when you look at this, then we've got negative one half times negative one squared minus a negative one plus four. So you want to be really careful, especially in this front part. Follow your order of operations. This is where most people mess up. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, and then you take it times a negative 1 half. You don't square that negative 1 half. And so we've got negative 1 half uh, plus 1 plus 4. And so if you add that up, you get 4 and a half. 
So my vertex is negative 1, 4.5. Okay. And so we'll go ahead and graph that on the function. So negative 1, 4.5. So you go left 1, up 4.5, and, and right there is my vertex. So it's going to open down where that's your maximum value in this case. All right, so that brings us to step four, which is to find the y-intercepts. Y-intercepts are really easy in this case because it's just zero comma c. So whatever your constant is at the end is your y-intercept. Kind of like y equals mx plus b, b is the y-intercept. Here in this case, c, c is the y-intercept. So uh, in our problem, notice 4, 4 is the uh, constant, so our vertex, or not our vertex, our y-intercept, and let's do it in blue, our y-intercept, or we can do it in red, same color on the left, our y-intercept is 0, comma 4, because that's our constant. So we'll go ahead and graph that. So 0, 4 is right there. And that's where this axis of symmetry is so powerful. So 0, 4 is a point on my graph. That means direct one unit to the opposite side of the axis of symmetry is also a point on our graph. And so now it's, we can kind of start to see that it is opening downward kind of nicely now. So the last step in this whole process for finding the most important things for a for a quadratic is the x-intercept if it has them. Well this one's above the x-axis and it opens down so we know that it does. Now there's lots of ways to find it. You could factor, um, you could do lots of different things, but it, I like to use the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Essentially what you're doing is you're letting y be 0, so 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c. In the y-intercept, you let x be 0, and you'd end up with your y-intercept c. Here we let y be 0, and we have to solve that equation. So in our case, if we do this in blue, we would have 0 equals negative 1 half x squared plus, or sorry, it was minus x forgot my equation there for a second, minus x plus 4. So we need to solve that. So if you do this, you'd have x equals negative, negative 1, which would be positive 1, plus or minus the square root of 1 squared, negative 1 squared, minus 4 times negative 1 half times 4, all over 2 times a, which is 2 times negative 1 half. And so if you simplify that, we'll just kind of kind of at the plug and chug portion of the video, uh, you'd have one uh, four times negative four times a half is positive two times four is eight. So you'd have one plus eight over negative one. And so eight plus one is nine. And we know that the square root of nine, let's try not to go too fast here. Square root of nine is three. And so we've got two x-intercepts, 1 plus 3 over negative 1, and 1 minus 3 over negative 1. So in both cases, 3 plus 1 is 4 over negative 1, so that's negative 4. And 1 minus 3 over negative 1 is negative 2 over negative 1, which is positive 2. So our two x-intercepts are negative 4, 0, and 2, 0. And so we'll graph those. And so negative 4, 0 is right there. 2, 0, right there. And you notice our axis of symmetry, we should have the same distances to these x-intercepts and if you see that if you notice there is indeed three points on both sides um, I'm just just put those in there to point that out to you that it should all match up with my axis of symmetry and we're ready to graph our equation and I'll do that in black 
So you just kind of connect the dots in a curved pattern. And generally, this is what the equation, if you had to rough sketch the quadratic, there's what it would look like. Now, like I say, there's all kinds of fancy things now, fancy tools to do this for you. Here I plugged it into GeoGebra. Um, you can see on the right there, I typed in y equals negative 1 half x squared minus x plus 4, and it just graphed it for me. That verifies that it is correct, and that gives you a better idea of the curve. So I hope this helps, and uh, I'll see you next time.